Howdy, Beefalo Bar here, and welcome. All right, this was, uh, well, kind of a spur of the moment stream here. I'm going to screw around with a couple things here. And first off, uh, I know that the Polygon City from Cindy Studios has actually updated, so apparently they have fixed the road textures, among um, a couple other things. And they've done something with the cars, so we're going to see how this is going to affect things here. Um, Look quickly at the meshes. So we have some rigged vehicles we can work with with our own individual skeletons. And we had something that was donated to us to play around with. It was the um the cycle vehicle. And let's actually take a look, see what's in here. Cycle there's no mesh, so um at least no visible mesh so far. Alright, so yeah, we're gonna have to assign a mesh to it. So, we'll quickly take a look at this stuff here. Hey, at least it's clean and neat and organized. Love that. Um, let's see, let's go to our viewport. We don't have a mesh selected, so... I'm assuming these scene locations are tire locations. And there's our skeletal mesh. So let's actually go ahead and just for now, let's see what happens when we throw a, a mesh on here for a vehicle. And let's go with the muscle car. A little different scale from what everything else was, but all right, so we'll work with that, and our vehicle collision. Hmm. Yep, we'll have to fill around with that. So, looks like the collision's actually going to extend down below the vehicle. Um, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. I'm assuming. So, front left, let's actually... Try to get this pretty close to the hub. Turn off snapping, because I know it will go too far. Alright, so that's um, front right. Yeah, um, for the first time looking at this, not knowing what I'm working with, I'm just kind of making assumptions as I go along here. So, like I said, just by assuming what's going on with the front left and right. I'm not sure what we're going to do with the collision yet. Rear left. Because if I move the, the mesh around, then what's going to happen is we'll actually... lose the... Um, part of the vehicle into the ground. So let's quickly grab this one and we'll do the same thing. I'm just putting it right on the outside edge of the hub. Oh, just gotta love it whenever you're telling it to drag in one axis and it decides it's gonna drag in two or three. Alright, I'm assuming that's going to be close enough. It's a physics collision, so it's probably going to be um, something that's necessary here. The um, vehicle collision. You see how it's it's underneath the, uh, the ground there. Is there a way we can actually raise that up? 
without actually lowering the the actual skeletal mesh down to suit it. Because if I lower the skeletal mesh down, what's going to happen is let's actually go into a let's do a quick save on it. And lobby map's good enough right now. So if I actually grab that, throw it into the map, as we can see, we have it now. But it's already got the wheel sticking into the ground. If I raise it up, hmm, we have a game mode. Yeah, um, so let's look at our world settings. Try that in selected viewport. Yeah, kind of figured this was going to be <laughs> bro. And yeah, that's going to be the um, the collision box. That that physics collision. So let's actually try it again with moving the skeletal mesh down, compile and save, so that that physics mesh is actually there, and let's try moving the vehicle back up again, and yeah, that's, that's not, uh, it's not happy. Let's actually go back into, since so we have that, that into the map itself, let's actually go into a third person game mode. Since we have uh, player starts here, so you can see what's happening to the vehicle. Yeah, it doesn't look particularly happy. <laughs> that has got one hell of a cam to make it idle really, 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 really rough. There's no collision in the vehicle. Okay, it's just moving on its own now. My movement's not going to affect it. Yeah, that's one, one hell of a cam. <laughs> Alright, well, it's amusing to look at here. Um, All right, so that's uh, <laughs> not working as intended. Just for the giggles of it, I'm actually going to raise it up even higher, let it fall down into the map, see what's going to go on. Let's put the mesh on top and don't move the tires. Um, that's these right here. The scene components are the actual tires. Um, you get your wheel radius. Um, <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right, looking at all this stuff here. Um, wheel radius. It, what What do you think would be the actual issue with it? Um, I'm assuming it's um. So actually just take all these and reset the locations. Reset them back to um, this way. They're going to go back to zeros. Were they set to zero before? Because resetting them this way... Um, Yeah, let's actually compile and save and see what it does now. Yeah, I'll probably have to copy it back in again because I, I don't remember what the, the values were. All right, so doing it that way though, that's hmm. The vehicle collision. I wish there was a way to actually move the collision around instead of. Um, the whole vehicle, because that's that's gonna be where the issue is running into right now. Is that they're all set to 
to zero 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 location. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'll go ahead and bring it back in again. But um, yeah, I didn't put an import uh, input in for the horn, but. All right, let me um, quickly off camera here and grab another copy of the original. And that was in Blueprints, Vehicles, Cycle, Blueprints, Cycle, Master. Make sure you're going to click off of that so. And content. I'm actually going to copy in another one and then replace it also. So, what I've done here is I've put another version of it here and here. So it should have let's actually delete this one yep that's fine um, so now I put this one right here and copy it so I've got an original and a duplicate inside the project and Okay, nothing is in the map, so we're good. And we go into the new version and say just drop in the vehicle without changing anything else. Yeah, we'll leave that to John because John's actually the one that actually created this. You now the um, the cycle scripting. Um, so I'm actually gonna raise it up so the collision's not in there. <laughs> well, it's there. It's. Um, I can physically push it around, so let's see what happens here. Um, let's actually change the game mode back over to the cycle and play. Actually, it does not like that. Um, default pawn, because it changed it. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get rid of the other version. So I know which one I'm working with. Well, it's working. I'm steering and driving around. I didn't set a key binding up for it because somebody set it up as a key binding and not as a generic. So, um, what is it actually called? Horn. Instead of setting an input action, you can actually just come in here and do keyboard key board if I learn how to frickin' type then we'll set it up manually here this way so we don't actually have to set up a key binding so we can just do this and this it'll do the same thing as if we actually set up a key binding but it lets it be generic so if, if you drop it into a project it'll automatically just work so 
So now with the uh, the fact that this is actually a hover car, um, it's hovering above the ground. What'll happen if we actually tried to move it down now, and tried to make the vehicle sit a little different? So we can see that we're at negative twenty. You guys help me remember that it's at negative twenty on the z-axis. Look to make sure we want to just clear the the collision box. Try that. Look at it here and see what happens now. Still working, but um, still hovering. So what happens if we actually drastically lower it down? So if we put it right there, it's where we had it now. But if we really lower it down, Yeah, we're taking something that was set up to be as a hover system and try to make it look like a car. It's close. Um, so it actually, um, the collision box is actually handling the collision instead of the car's collision. So really and truly, it's pretty close. Um, let's turn off snapping on collision. And let's just angle it down just a little bit. I want the car just to be off the ground. And see what it looks like. Yeah, it's still, um... Yeah, so with the uh, location of the, um, the tires, let's actually look underneath it and click on the location for the tires. And that's where the issue is, is, um... They're still in the corner, so we were to actually take that vehicle collision and I'm going to move the car back up again. We're going to set that to zero and we'll leave that at 62, but we're going to zero that back out. But we're going to go ahead and raise the car up just so we can see what we're working with here. No, you ass clown. All right, so if we look at our vehicle collision, let's try two by, oh no, two by 1.5. Yeah, it doesn't really like that all that much. So vehicle, we have to do 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.75. Get the car's dimensions back right again. And let's actually move it back a little bit and see what happens. All right, so that, that actually makes it work a little bit better, but it's it's got the vibration going on right there. So um, let's try lowering it down just a hair more. Yeah, well, that's one option there. Um, yeah, still got the vibration. 
means that um, something to do with the uh, the physics is not in the right spot there. It's kind of cool to play around with it with these, but where I think it would really come in handy is if you actually created your own mesh system. So if um, we actually got rid of the car mesh and let's say just for the heck of it for right now um, um, this project doesn't have starter content I don't want to add it in there because that's unnecessary amount so I'm going to grab a geometry and that was a skeletal mesh crap um, no, I'm not going to mess with it right now. What I can do is create a custom mesh and work with it that way because it's still got the vibration going. Um, So I don't know what's actually causing the vibration. Fun to work with. Um, what I've done in the past for for making these um, the the cars work for um, let's actually go to a different map, something that's more than just this little bumper car uh, location. Let's go to Polygon City since we have that one installed in this project. Let's go to the demonstration map for it and let's see if they actually fix the roads and what I want to do is go in first off and um, yeah we're not worried about saving that map is there's already a buttload of cars in this map so to kind of make some room for us to drive around on I am gonna try to find all the cars should be piled up together and I can just select them all. This should be all of them. Delete. That should clear that out. And let's go ahead and try setting in the um, that vehicle in here. There's a way that I normally set up the vehicles to work with in the um, this. This was you know different trying to set it up with this system. And let's go ahead and rotate it and raise it up. Now that's just the um, the visual version. Let's actually put in a player start and rotate that around. Set the game mode to that and let's see what happens. Sounds a little bit awkward, but but now we can actually drive around the city and have a map to actually drive on. Oh no, he's going the wrong way. Oh, some damn good traffic cones, boy! I tell you what. Yeah, we need to set some physics. To the, yeah, well, I wasn't going to comment on the horn sound. It actually handles pretty well um, driving around like this, except for the engine sounds. So it's nice having a pre-made city I can just, oh shit, tree, just drive around in. So what, you know, that that's cool actually, we can get in here and, and have somewhere to, to physically test it out because it's already a, a, an established city. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you the alternative of how I, I also do this for setting up the cars to work with the uh, the Polygon City, um, and that's to hmm. Okay, I don't know what, what the hell that was, but um, we're gonna go ahead and 
go to add new add feature or content pack and just add in vehicle add a project and then in the sedan come inside here and this is the um, the default one from Unreal Engine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the mesh here I'm going to change that mesh out for Yeah, uh, screw it. Let's be a cop car. Um, um, I haven't actually tried these in multiplayer like that, so could probably tweak around with with what you've got to try to get a little bit more stable on the um, the, and so it's not vibrating. Um, I've never tried to use these in multiplayer, so I don't know for sure. Um. You got your vehicle movement controls. Everything is here. Um, close down some of these extra windows here. Um, so, yeah, in the event graph, yeah, we'll take a look at that. Um, get in the viewport. One of the things you have to take into account here when you're using these vehicles with the default is the naming convention of the tires. Which I'm actually going to go ahead and close the cycle version really quickly. I'm going to come down in here and go to vehicle rigged. All these are going to have the same naming for the, uh, the parts. So I just want to look at the skeleton. And you'll look, it's called wheel underscore FL, FR, RL. It's just those two letters. But if you actually look at the blueprint reference to, and if you're scrolling through, you're trying to find it, just type in the search box wheel under you know the, the main match, uh, main part there, sedan, and Oh, sorry, under vehicle movement, under wheel, where you type in wheel on the details panel with vehicle movement selected, you can see that it's going to be using the wrong bone names. So what you have to do is come in here and change that to, this is front left, so we want FL, both lowercase. This one is front right, so we want FR and this one is rear left so come on come on quit being a pain in the ass RL and then RR because if you don't you're gonna have the same kind of issue with the vehicle bouncing and doing all kind of weird stuff so on this map let's actually change the game mode over to um, vehicle game mode and there you go nice there's no sound though so the car is a little bit on the quiet side you got spacebar for your handbrake You're using the, all the controls from the default and you can see we've got the um, speedometer and kilometers per hour it shows you what gear you're in you can handbrake turn do a little drifting in a police car. Um, yeah, the tab key will change to an in-car view. Hey, how's it going, man? So now you can play in-car and... Oh, shit. And fall back in it. All right, so yeah, that, that was a, a fail driving there. Um, yeah, and... I love this asset pack. So there's your alternative. Yeah, the cycle one works, but for some reason it's doing that wiggle thing. We'll have to experiment with it and rescale the uh, the physics box. Um, so it'll stop doing that wobble. It performs well. It drives well. It feels better than the um, Unreal Engine 4 version. Keep forgetting you can handbrake turn. So this one just feels too slippery. Um, so whenever you're driving around, uh, yeah, the, 
the tires it just feels like it's you know you're driving on snow man I love these freaking things man and, and it's nice that I, I just threw this asset pack in here and they fixed the, the roads and that was just it was a minor inconvenience but you know it makes all the difference in the world when you have to stop and fix your physics uh, so yeah I mean this this version here the UE4 version eh, it works but feels kind of mushy whereas um, John we, we run yours and right now if it's it's still wobbling you, you know besides the acceleration being better um, I let off the accelerator and it slows down pretty drastically um, so I think with some tweaks on that one right there we're setting it up as a car system um, it's really really close I mean it's really close it really makes this car handle a lot better feeling wise than the um, the UE4 sedan version. I'm sure you could tweak either one and make it work, but it feels more. Well, I don't exactly have any hills on this particular map, so um, let's actually... We can fix that, though. That's not a problem. Um, the vehicle BP map is... Yeah, we'll save that one. That's fine. Um... Or was it the advanced vehicle one? Well, um, let's change the game mode over to run yours. And we got player start, so we should be okay. Um, let's delete that off the map because it's wanting to start from there instead of the player spawns. It's not a true hilly map. I can actually do the um, the advanced vehicle. It handled that bump pretty well. The uh, the stock you need know, a like a handbrake turn. That bump getting onto this little overpass thing here on the um, in fact, instead of trying to explain it, it's actually so. This is the same thing, but with the vehicle mode from the epic uh, the handles that okay just even with the that terrible engine sound it's better to have some sound than none the turning just is not really that responsive on this thing whereas on your version John it's a lot better okay this is actually a little bit better transition usually that's a um, really rough transitioning into that one so let's actually go ahead and add new and let's add the advanced or vehicle advanced to the project because that map has actually got some hills and stuff. Yeah, John's done some pretty good work. So vehicle advanced. Let's go to that map. So again, this is the UE4 version with the Cinti Studio. Well, with this is this is their version with their advanced vehicle. What happens? You hit this too hard, and your vehicle is just flopping all over the place. So if anybody's ever played with this, um, to run this map, the center of gravity is off on it, and yeah, it's just a little bit on the weird side. So let's try that with um, hmm. vehicle blueprint. Oh, that's it. Um, sedan. Well, screw you then. Um, I want to change it to vehicle game mode 
and sedan. What the hell is it doing? Um, did they call their sedan here also? I thought it was, uh, no, it's vehicle blueprint. Oh, get rid of that Garbo and actually put a player start in here instead of being a dumbass. There we go. So this is the UE4 sedan. You know, with no sound whatsoever. We hit these same bumps that was causing the advanced version to absolutely freak out. Ooh, still some some gravity issues and center gravity issues. So that was just a total fail. So let's try the sedan mode off-road. It really doesn't like that. We're already stuck. Of course, Crown Victorias are not really notorious for, for their off-road performance. Yeah, all, all my um, my streams are are saved so they can uh, be viewed later as well. So let's see how it handles the whoops, the jump. Handles the jump a hell of a lot better. It actually makes most of the way through the loop. And then off-road, let's see what we can get up to. It is not wanting to get over here into this. It performs a lot better than the um, both of the, the two UE4 versions. So it definitely merits some... some I'm looking into to try to tweak it a little bit more to actually work as a car instead of uh, a cycle. And it was for those who missed the, the first part of this. It was actually this blueprint was set up to be a hover car or a hover bike instead of an actual car, and we're just experimenting with um, adding it in as a car blueprint in, uh, instead. We made some changes to the, um, the physics collision on it, and it's helped a little, but it still has that vibration. So we need to figure out how to get rid of that. Yeah, it's, it, it feels better. I, it, it just, I know it's kind of hard to explain why you're driving with a keyboard and, and that kind of thing, but it's, it feels more responsive. It feels more like driving. It needs a handbrake. Um, so yeah, with a, a few tweaks on that, that's going to be a pretty badass um, setup. Um, let's actually go back to the city. It was also a good, good one. Yeah, whatever, we'll say that. Um, let's actually try that with the the city with the. So I've tried messing around with this one right here, but this is a lot smaller. These tires, though, man, good God, look at these tires. How hard would it have been to throw in a few extra polygons at these tires, man, to make them round? Looks like they're just absolutely freaking out. Oh, shit. Fail. <laughs> and then, again, the same map with... Um, the Camaro, which is set up with the the same as that right there. Alright, so sound fix and um, some physics tweaking to try to get the uh, the tires right. Now, John, what do you think about actually taking and moving the tire positions? It's like moving them down or something like that. Or instead of actually moving them, setting them up in the actual blueprint. Because the actual blueprint itself... Um, we don't need these to open. Go to the cycle blueprints. And vehicles, cycle blueprints. Um, so... With that being said, all the settings over here on the right-hand side. Hey, WR. Um... The wheel radius, perhaps? 
set a wheel radius to 20 and see what happens. So remember, it's at 15 right now, so let's actually change it to 20 and see what happens with it. Yeah, there's a lot of settings in there. Okay, first off, it's not shaking anymore. Yeah, that, that took care of the, uh, the changing the wheel size actually took care of that. It's no longer shaking and it still feels good. Um, it's not perfect, but it feels pretty good. Um, I'm using the down arrow to kind of fake reverse it to, uh, to do the, um, a handbrake. Let's go up here. I've played on this map so freaking much that I know my way around pretty well. <laughs> Uh, so you can see it's no longer shaking and vibrating, so that's a good thing. So I could actually sit here and let's try this out on the other two maps. And what I can do, since I set this up as a multiplayer um, project um, with my menu and everything else, it'll actually function as a, a multiplayer. So I just clean up things a little bit here and there and can actually make this to where I can upload this and we can all be playing this and test it out together. So let's look at the map for advanced. Save selected. So this could actually be a playable version. Um, the only thing that I don't know, like I said, is... Um, okay, handle that bump pretty well. I knew they wasn't going to make that. Um, let's actually try this loop over here. Because this is the one that's really the test. You hit these bumps. And then you want to hit the loop. And there we go. And try it again off-road. Yeah, um, what can we do with the uh, the engine sounds here? Is it uh, the pitch multiplier? Oh shit, fail. Um, on the engine loop sound, um, got a volume multiplier, envelope, follow attacker, follower release, pitch multiplier. You think that would be it? Is set to one. Let's change it to zero point five. And I'm gonna go back to the city map. Yeah, it sounds like an angry frickin' bee. Yeah, that wasn't it. <laughs> that angry bee just got a little bit more bass to it. <laughs> well, that was different. Um, I'm actually going to leave it at 0.7 because that wasn't horrible. Um... Modulation. Engine loop. Pitch multiplier is at seven. Was it something in the sound cue, perhaps, whenever you set it up? That we could do with it, but, um... Or was it the engine that was causing it to do that? Let's see. Walkable object types. And there's a lot of settings in here. Wheel radius of 20. Really smooth things out. Gravity is at 2000. Not bad. Acceleration 1500. Might actually lower that down just a little bit. Um, 
Let's try it at 1,000 instead of 1,500. Just see if it, because it, it's a pretty hard acceleration. Um, it's good. Don't don't get me wrong. I like fast acceleration. Hell, that's why I drive a uh, a vehicle that's all wheel drive. I think for this map, see, I changed the acceleration, but it seems like now it's affected the top speed as well. And it doesn't overexcite the sound. I am in the United States, I am in South Carolina. This is actually pretty good. Um, loop back to the left, make another left up here, and we'll head straight down here, take a right, and we'll be at the park again. Let's actually drive through the park, see if we can. We still have a little bit of collision to it. So what I can do is Let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. And I'm actually going to rename this map and move it to a different location. So I'm going to clean all this stuff up just a little bit. And I can package this up as a multiplayer game and make it playable. And I can actually upload it. Um, go to the maps folder. Let's close that. Let's actually file save current as in our maps folder. Let's actually screw it. I'm just going to replace the lobby map for now because I've already got my multiplayer template set up to run off of that. So let's go through a few settings here, make sure everything is good to go. Um, I'm actually going to. Do you want me to to add in a a map selection, or just leave this map right here only as the only one to, to play around with for the, the the test? I think I'll do that. I just leave this right here as the the test map, and I'm going to go ahead and delete these other two vehicle modes. Yeah, just want to do this as a uh, a test to make sure everything works. So I need to get rid of these other two folders as well, here and here, and that should be pretty much it. You had a map in there also. Map files are where the actual size of the uh, the projects end up being. Probably should have left these in here because there were some traffic cones, but whatever, you know, I already got that. And I love it whenever it, you tell it to delete shit and it doesn't get rid of it. It won't get rid of those two folders. So, not a big deal. So we got our lobby map and our main menu map. This is now our lobby map, by the way. Um, so I'm going to go to main menu map. I'm going to hit play in standalone game. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm still tweaking around with my player character on the other thing. So this menu is really, really simple, clean, plain, whatever. I'll just throw an image right here just so it's not completely ugly. You get your Steam username and avatar here. Exit game, multiplayer, single player. Go to multiplayer, host make up a name, whatever you want it to be, hit make, and it goes in. Now, since it is a Steam-based system, you can actually do this. And I think what I should do is probably add in a couple more um, player starts. Just so you're not spawning in on top of each other. So, the one thing I do see here is there's no way of getting out of it so 
Um, let's fix that really quickly. So, go into... That's why in my player character, in the blueprints, I have this escape menu functionality. And if you create your own custom stuff like we're doing right here, I can control C and then I can go into here and I'm going to find just an empty spot. But since you made it so nice and pretty and going straight up and down, I will be kind enough to put it down here. So we have an escape menu, compile, save, close that, and let's try it one more time. And then I'll throw a couple start, uh, a couple of player starts in, and I can actually package this and make it playable. And I will actually put a download link in my Discord channel. So if you guys are not members of my Discord, you might want to do it. So, we'll go into it in multiplayer mode, and all I'll do is I'll get rid of that ex extra one right there. So yeah, that works. We're good to go. We are driving around. Hit escape, and main menu. Now I can go back here and hit single player, and... Yeah, I, I put that particular line in there. Um, go connect to Steam Dummy, because one of the guys on my team always turns off his Steam account. And he knows that our project is based off of Steam. And he always forgets. It's uh, Beefalo Bart Gaming. Three words. Uh, and give me a second and I will link it here. It should be in the, uh, the video description. But let's go ahead and hit Main Menu and Exit Game. And... Well, this is just a um, a one day or but that's direct link to my Discord channel. Um, let's go to the map. But yeah, he would always forget to um, have Steam turned on before we would start doing our testing. It's like, man, I can't figure out why this damn thing won't work. I'm like, um, what what does it say when you first go in? Well, does it show your Steam username and avatar? Uh, no. What does it say in the upper right-hand corner of the screen? Oh, never mind. <laughs> That's right. Go connect to Steam, dummy. So let's put a player start here. Rotate that. So whoever starts in this particular spot is going to be in a parking place. So I put it, put it in there like that just for his sake. Just because he always forgets. And then what do I do? Right in the middle of doing a test, trying to get a bunch of stuff going, and my dumbass forgets. Uh, screw it. Let's just put one right here. Now let's put it right here, and let's turn it around. So, we got three... Let's go ahead and put one more just for sake of it. So we'll have four player spawns in different parts of the city. It's not like there's any combat going on with it just yet, but uh be interesting to um, take this, make sure your collisions are all set just right, and throw in some pedestrians that can be run over. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with... Um, one was a game and, and a movie. There was Death Race... And then there was um, Carmageddon. Um, and Death Race, um, apparently it was such a thing for these cars with saw blades and teeth and swords and stuff hanging off of them that um, people wanted to be part of the production so much that these disabled people would wheel their wheelchairs out into the roadway so they can get run over by one of the Death Race racers. This is like a 70s era movie, early 80s era movie, so... Um, yeah, it wasn't very popular to begin with. So, yeah. That's got that cover. We've got our map. It's set up. Four player starts. Um, let's start it in selected viewport. 
And we start here. Lovely. But what I was saying is, you could actually put in some other stuff to, um, like, GTA 1 style, where you're running over the, the Harry Krishnas, or whatever. You could set up whatever you want for, for running over. This is just a quick test to demonstrate um, this, the MP Cycles pack uh, setup of what he had configured there. And we don't need the Red Man folder. Actually, I'm going to leave it in there because I might tweak around with that and make an NPC walking around the streets that you can actually run over. Got to have something to, to have some points wise for later. So that's all good. Everything's clear. It will not let me delete these two folders. Thank you, Unreal Engine 4. Um, game mode should be all set. Again, it never hurts to test and double test. So this is our main menu. Actually, let me go ahead and do what I was saying before. Just for the giggles of it, having an image. Let me just find something to put in here for the um, the main menu. Because this main menu is a little bit on the wow plain side. I'm not going to put any music or anything else in right now. And it will say go connect your Steam dummy right here because we're in the uh, the viewport. Because it doesn't actually use the um, the specific Steam architecture at that point. Assets, audio, images, and I just want any picture from hell any Cinti Studios. I've got so many freaking screenshots that it's pathetic. Just wanted one with a car in it. And actually, I actually had one in particular where uh, um, where the, the cars were actually the there were pedestrians. You could actually run over the uh, the pedestrians. But you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna grab this this image for now, just so something else is in the menu. And Let's go into the widget for main menu and I'm going to select that image and I'm going to add another image in here just for shitolos and grins and let's go ahead and make the Z order to negative two so it stays behind and then for this one we'll do negative one for the Z order and let's go ahead and size it out so now it'll sit in this full portion and it'll sit just behind these burgundy lines and why aren't you sitting behind there? Um, divider um, it's set to Z that's at the negative one so it should sit behind there but you know what don't care at this point so let's go ahead and go to our brush open up that hit that and there we got something okay it ain't beautiful but shit it'll work so, and compile, save, close that, and let's go ahead and play one more time to make sure everything is working, and then I will go ahead and package this, and I will upload it. We want to play it in standalone game. Well forgot to do something there but UI widgets main menu hey let's anchor it to the right damn position let's anchor it to the oh I don't know full screen how about that it's gonna not be right but again this is just a let's play it and see what kind of 
stupid fun we can have. So everything is there. Again, play it in the standalone. We'll drive around town one good time. We'll exit game. So for those of you who have not played anything with my multiplayer template in it before, um, if you're in the same Steam region as I am, I'm in the East Coast of the United States. So if you're on the East Coast of North America, uh, you should be able to get into the hosted game. So if you want to host a game, click on multiplayer, click on host, and put it in a name. But if you want to find somebody else's game, you click on find, and it'll hide itself if you keep clicking it. Then click find lobby. It'll look around, see if there's anything. If not, then you can host your own. Click on host, give it a name, and make. And now since it's there, people will be able to find it and join your game and there will be much fun had by all. Alright, so I say this was a success. We turned the, the hover bike into a car and for this case it's a Camaro. For now everybody will be the same old color, but what I can do is do another video with this later and Yes, the resume does work, by the way. So if you want to hit the uh, escape menu, tab out, do something else, or whatever. And when you do actually play this game, it will be in full screen. So you don't have to worry about that either. And it's going to bug me that the stupid image is not stretched all the way. It would bug me to no end to see it overlap like that, or not overlap enough. Alright, so that's lovely. I'm done screwing with it. I'm going to go ahead. We know it works. And I'm going to package this. And the way that I package my test versions is by development. I come over here to File. And I will come over here to Package Project. Yeah, it's 1130 here as well. Um, but I'll probably be up till 4 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to package it for Windows and 64-bit. But one thing you have to keep in mind, though, th my project is already set up. So if you look at your project settings, and then come over here, you got maps and modes. This is all fine for my particular project. That's good. And for packaging, if you have additional maps put in, I didn't change anything. I'm using the same ones that I had before, the main menu map and the lobby map. But you would find that in the packaging for development and I'm selecting under packaging here show advanced scroll down and this is where you can set up your localization for other languages and stuff um, a list of maps to include in a packaging build and what you would do is actually click on the uh, thing navigate to where the the map is located and double click on it so you can have it set in here I don't have to change anything. Mine's good to go. Everything works. So again, what I'm going to do is come over here to save all. Make sure everything is good. Save current. File. Package project. Windows 64-bit. Make sure you got everything set for um, development for right now. Until you're ready to release a game, always try to package your stuff in development mode and it should package just fine. I'm actually going to go into my F drive, which is for my flipping Unreal Engine 4, and I'm going to create a new folder called Hover Cars, and then select folder, and it is going to package. And I'm going to go ahead and show the output log so there's something on the screen besides you just having to listen to my horrible voice. So I can see that we have this. And don't worry about it. Normally when you see red, it's a bad thing. It's time to freak out. Well, this is trying to do for Apple. Um, you just get with me tomorrow, and it depends on how busy I get. Um, actually, got yard work to do tomorrow. <laughs> um, I've been neglecting my yard quite a bit. But I will try to give you a hand the best that I can on, on, on Discord. Um, 
and try to walk you through. But the packaging part itself is just, for right now, just package everything under development mode, and you should be good. So we're going to let this run all the way through. It usually doesn't take very long. It, it takes a longer time based on the size of your project. What I should have done is, is only done this for Windows only, because that's what I'm packaging it for. Um, so you're not packaging unnecessary extra junk. So you're not trying to package stuff for Apple or for whatever else. Um, you know, trying to package it to work on other platforms is what I'm trying to say. So while I'm, I'm letting this, this run, which I probably should have canceled it, yeah, um, just make sure you download the Windows um, 8.1 SDK. Um, anytime you see anything red pop up, take heed, read it, see what it says. It's hard to see whenever you're, you're talking about with these default colors, that red just does not show up very well. So what you end up having to do is, is highlight it so you can actually read it. So you see what I'm saying here? It's loading in crap here for Android. Um, we don't, don't need all that right now. It's loading stuff for Mac. We don't need that, so I should have changed that in my, my packaging so that I'm only packaging for Windows 64-bit only instead of this unnecessary stuff. It's not going to hurt it. It'll still work, but it's cooking everything down. It's like my, my Beefalo's cooking show here all over again, and we're just about done. 2016 files. Packaging complete, no problems whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close this. And I'm going to off screen here because I do have three monitors that I'm working on here. And I'm going to locate the hover cars folder. And I'm going to test out the game really quickly here on screen with everybody. So I can show you that it is a full screen game. Just cleaning up one thing. Yeah, you have to install Visual Studio, but it's free. So that's that's not a problem either. See, I always get that Windows firewall issue. So just click OK on that. I want to make sure you guys can see. Yeah, there, there's that. So yeah, it is actually running full screen. So you can see that. Um, oh yeah, ignore that. That's a screenshot from another another project with uh, the Polygon City and Polygon High stuff. But you see, we have our menu, and we can go to multiplayer, host, whatever we want for a name, and make. Or we could have chose to go to single player if we're just going to play with ourselves. I mean, play by ourselves. <clears throat> but if you set it up in multiplayer mode and anybody else has the project, they can actually choose to join you if they wish. So you don't have to keep playing with yourself. You can have somebody else play with you. No innuent, it was what I meant there. So yeah, it works. We're driving around. This is actually the game. This is what I'm getting ready to, uh, to zip up and upload to Google Drive. And then just a short amount of time we just put together with a couple assets. It's always more fun whenever somebody else plays with you. You know, it's okay to play with yourself every now and then, but, you know... It's, yeah, I'm just going to leave this topic to hell alone for right now. So, right now there's nothing else to do in the game but drive around, but it's cool. We just put together, essentially, and tweaked the um, a sight unseen asset. I've never seen this cycle asset before. The files for it and to quickly make it work with a completely other asset pack which is the uh, the Cinti Studios Polygon City yeah I think with with a little bit of a cleanup and I don't know if you can tell but the engine sound is better right now it's because I lowered the um, the acceleration and set the pitch modifier to 0.7 but yeah, you work out a few more little bugs, and you put this on um, this vehicle system on um, the marketplace, and I think you got a winner. So again, the resume game does work. Hit escape, go back to main menu, single player, click on that, you can go right in, it works. Hit escape, go back to main menu, hit exit game, works. 
I'm going to go ahead and package this up. I'm, well, it's already packaged, but I'm going to zip it up while we're, we're talking right now, and then I will upload this to um, Google Drive and link this in the public lobby of my Discord channel. It will be called hovercars.rar. And, oh my god, this is taking forever to package and, and zip up. I'm using WinRAR. This is going to take forever. I could do a video on that. Okay, by the way, it, it is done. Uh, packaging. Or zipping. Um, the file size. Upper cars. Whole 105 megabytes. So. You want people to check out your package, John? Yeah, make sure you have um, Visual Studio installed. And the SDK installed. And you should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and end this uh, stream at almost exactly the same time that we ended the earlier stream. It's 105 megs, so it's only going to take me a few minutes to get this thing uploaded. And I will link it directly into the public lobby of my Discord channel. And if anybody that's on, it wants to download it and play it, jump right in and go ahead. I'm, I'll host one and be driving around having a ball with it. Yeah, no problem. We can figure it out. Like I said, um, you can chat with John or you can hop on my Discord and chat uh, there. But I'm going to go ahead and end, end the stream so I can upload this file because, you know, I have crappy internet. So, Alright, this will be up on, on the link on Discord here in a few minutes. So, thanks guys for watching. This was kind of some, some freelance goofing off, trying to, to make some stuff work, and it worked. Yeah, um, I do have a bunch of different streams set up doing stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff with the, the Cinti Studios, the Polygon stuff. Um, I've been doing a lot more reviews lately, and I enjoy doing the reviews, especially whenever the stuff is actually good. Um, so, yeah. We'll see you on Discord here in a few minutes, and I will see you guys there. Peace.